Nassim Nazism Solomon Poor and Nazim at Luminato, David Monte Podge, Amanda Paris seemed alarmed to find a banker's box filled with a 400-page script as she performed Nazim for the first time this week, Luminato by Nazim Solomon Poor, directed by Omar Alirian. Until June 16 at the Berkeley Street Theatre, 26 Berkeley Street Luminato Festival.com and 416-368-3100, playwright Nassim Solomonpour recently called this a one-and-a-half-person show. It's performed by a different individual each time, frequently not a professional actor, who has not seen the script in advance. Solomon Poor piloted this technique in his play White Rabbit Red Rabbit, which was by necessity performed by proxies in international locations because he was not at that point allowed to leave his native Iran, he didn't do national military service, which results in a mobility ban. Now living in Berlin, he travels the world with relative freedom, and involves himself personally in this show in a way that would be unfair to spoil, because it happens early on and is one of its delights. Originally co-produced by the playwright and the Bush Theatre in London, England, it's in Toronto as part of the Luminato Festival, in association with Why Not Theatre. Article continued below the performer at the show I attended was the broadcaster and playwright Amanda Paris, who looked rather ill when she was shown a banker's box and told that it contains a script that's more than 400 pages long. In fact, it's shorter than that, and she and the audience are quickly in safe hands as live images, projected from offstage, instruct us in the rules of this theatrical game. Paris was a genial and charming performer, open to the different challenges and invitations for emotional self-exposure the production sets out. Upcoming participants include Gavin Crawford, Ross Manson, Michael Redhill, Allegra Fulton and Karen Robinson. Over the course of the 70-minute show, Paris and various spectators are instructed in basic Farsi, Solomon Poor's native tongue, and are acquainted with aspects of his early life in Cheras, at the same time giving him tips about how to navigate the 6-6. His drill sensibility comes through in the particularities of the script, the early insertion of the acronym, WTF, signals a fascination with vocabulary and swear words. We see the notebook where he's written down complicated words he's been taught everywhere the show's played, from Seoul to Copenhagen to Dusseldorf. Director Omar Alirian and designer Reese Jarman skillfully use technology to extend the production's themes of proximity and distance. Read more, we are in a culture war here, two fierce shows boldly represent the new Ireland it comes to Luminato, led by Panty, the Emerald Isle's best-known drag performer while the play is not overtly political, Solomon Poor is making points about freedoms we have in the West that we may take for granted. That's important and fair, but there's something in the logic of the play that didn't stack up. For me, it ostensibly spins around a capacity to communicate that is not available to Solomon Poor, but exactly what that capacity is became muddied, especially in a sentimental final reveal. The show rests quite heavily on the emotive power of the connection between mothers and children. The most important word in Solomon Poor's life, he says, is mummin. Parsi for mum, which it implicitly posits as universal. I'm proceeding in good faith that local producing companies, in addition to vetting the chosen performers for a certain food allergy, are also sensitive to their backgrounds, those with a traumatic experience of being parented or of familial loss would not find this a picnic. This show combines two current trends in contemporary performance, shows in which people play themselves, as with Why Not Theatre's A Brimple of Osho, and those that involve performers engaging with a script in real time, as with Man Watching, recently performed at the Tarragon Theatre. The more familiar I become with these approaches, the more questions I have about them, and I offer these final thoughts as opportunities for debate, rather than as a discrediting of Solomon Poor's point of view. Everything this show has to offer, a gently critical nudging of Western privilege, smart writing, clever use of technology, a compact touring package, has made it highly popular on the International Theatre Festival circuit.
But part of its offer is its authenticity, the fact that what's happening is really happening not just to the guest performer but to Solomon for, which is rendered less credible to me because he's performed it hundreds of times. Some of what is presented as spontaneity is being simulated and commodified, and two days later I'm still asking myself what he was really getting at by putting contingency so much in the foreground.